Hello, I'm your nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. Shit. So, recently I put up a poll asking you to vote for me to review a horrible Christmas special. And only one person voted. At least with my previous poll, I managed to get two people to vote. This one, I only got one person to vote. And it wasn't even somebody on YouTube, it was a personal friend who I had to strangle and I'd threaten I'd murder his family if he didn't vote. And that one person voted for me to torture myself. Since you know that new Star Wars film has been coming out and everybody's got their mixed opinions about it. Well, I subjected myself to watch the Star... I'm going to watch the Star Wars Holiday Special. What, you're going to... What, you expect me to go on a style train and go, Ew, it's Christmas, it's a miracle! No, all I'm going to have for you to look at visually is this ball of unlit Christmas lights I couldn't be bothered untangling. And so, before I subject myself to this terrible piece of torment crap, let's give a little bit of history first. Back in 1978, a year I do not remember since I wasn't born then, and... If you're born, if you're not born, if, if you're born after a certain date, don't try and go back to that certain date, or else you'll look at God right in the face himself. Ugh. Anyways, yeah, anyway, a new, the, the, the new film which very few, the new original film Star Wars had just come out, and, you know, there were tons of fans about it, and so CBS, the American company, decided to finance a Star Wars Christmas special. And this isn't one of those stupid, you know, from like cheap low budget things where they barely got anybody in. No, they got flipping almost every member of the original casting. I mean, they got Harrison Ford, they got Mark Hamill, they got Carrie Fisher, they got Anthony Daniels, and they've got, a, yeah, they got a few others. A few others. This only had once in in November 1978 and George Lucas himself later disowned it saying that if saying that if he had the chance he'd go everywhere where the special existed and smash him with a sledgehammer and mind you this is the same person who thought Jar Jar Binks was okay so if Jar Jar Binks was okay and but this wasn't then it must be notoriously bad yeah, but um, thankfully, unlike Rhapsody Street Kids, this one they actually this one didn't go missing, and and now it's available on YouTube for everybody to watch. And so I'm going to go downstairs, watch it, and you'll see my reaction. Wish me luck, people. Wish me luck. Ugh, ugh. Me ears are bleeding. Ugh, help me. Ugh. God, please. God. Ugh. God, I don't want to go on. But I must do for my fans who don't watch anything. Seriously, I should consider quitting this YouTube thing. Ugh, I'll see you in a minute. Well, that was painful. I mean... Oh my god, that was terrible. In case you are blessed with not the knowledge of what the special is about, here's a quick one up. It's not even a Christmas special. Yeah, basically it follows um, Chewbacca's family. Of all the characters you could follow, why Chewbacca? It's Chewbacca's family. And Chewbacca tries to get home to celebrate this fictional holiday in the Star Wars universe called Life Day. Yes, Life Day. You couldn't even come up with Wookmas. It's not even a Christmas special, so why am I reviewing it at Christmas? Well, Christmas is the year of torture, so I suppose you have to give or take, don't you? It's... Let me just tell you, it's bad. It's awful. A big chunk of... It's nonsensical, it's a nonsensical drug trip. That's the best word I can describe it as. Nonsensical drug trip. 
trip. And for the for, and for the majority of the movie, you have to pull up with that annoying noise Chewbacca makes. Remember how Chewbacca was very and could get a bit irritating in A New Hope. Well, he gets to put up with it for ninety minutes with his even more irritating family. Yay! It's just oh, 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 that for ninety minutes. Okay, not literally that for ninety minutes. You do get some weird visuals, such as. So, such as one of the members of Chewbacca's family, who I can't remember the name of, watching a cooking show, and it's, yeah, and it's, yeah, and it's stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir, stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir, honest to God, that's what it is, it's weird, non sequitur dance sequences, and, and weird druggy moments, including an out of nowhere moment where Chewbacca's father watches intergalactic space porn. I wish I was joking. And and I know you could probably be saying, oh, it's just me being an adult, I'm gonna date my maybe and then it's an intention. If you watch it, and especially now I know, it was intended as Wookiee space porn. So why why would they put that in a kid's film? Honestly. Honest to God, it's just been horrendous. Oh. Yeah, I suppose the only sort of proper contribution this movie did give to the Star Wars mythos is the fact that it was the introduction of Boba Fett. And I mean, it's not like a typical Star Wars film, you know, where you'd expect tons of big action and... It's not a traditional Star Wars, Star Wars movie where it's full of, like, big action. And then stuff. In fact, to point to most action scene is contained within a little segment where Chewbacca's son watches this weird sort of cartoon version of this of the Star Wars of of an action scene in a Star Wars movie. And that is the only thing I can vaguely tolerate, if not for the horrendously horrible looking animation. I mean the animation in it is just eh. Particularly Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford looks terrible. He looks... He's had some very... That's all you get when he makes Botox and plastic surgery. And that woman who started injecting her face with cooking oil. That's what you get. Ugh. Ugh. But the one good thing that scene provided was the fact that it was the introduction of Boba Fett. Yes, this movie, this special, or... Actually, we call it a special because it's no there's nothing special about it, other than how bad it is. This piece of TV screen, yeah, is the in yeah, it was the thing that introduced us to flipping Boba Fett, who's gone on to be one of the biggest sort of fan favorite characters in the Star Wars mythos. And that's about it. That's all it was able. That was all that it was. That was all the good things about. That was sort of the only good thing about it. Yeah, and also the Empire is in the movie as well, and they couldn't think of better things to do rather than to close down cantinas. Okay, they technically didn't close it down. They just basically put a curfew on the Wookiee planet, which I can't remember the name of. Oh, no, no, damn it, it was Mos Eisley, wasn't it, where the Cantina was? Yeah, it was Mos Eisley, they put a, they put a curfew on it, so, as a result, so as a result, they had to close, so as a result, in the, in sort of like the rest, the cafe, which you saw in A New Hope, they had to close it down. And, to be honest, couldn't the Empire have been a lot more creative? Really, really, Empire, you've, you've had a lot you could have been a lot more intimidating than that. I mean, seriously. And also, one of the biggest flaws with the movie, as if there wasn't enough flaws, is the fact that they never explain what the hell Life Day is. They just say Life Day. I know it's supposed to be sort of like the Wookiee version of Christmas, but come on you can at least explain what like the traditions of life day is other than looking at weird space porn and have yeah and dressing up in weird costumes and hanging around and having carrie fisher sing an out of nowhere song 
you could have explained it better. Instead, you're just like, it's a holiday. It's like Christmas, but it's not. I'm sorry. That could apply to any holiday. Halloween, it's like Christmas, but it's not. Easter, it's like Christmas, but it's not. Ugh, oh, honestly. So fucking endless. And also, as I previously mentioned, at the end of the movie, Carrie Fisher sings an out of nowhere song. Now, now I'm sorry to sound quite mean, and I mean, Carrie Fisher, she was a brilliant actress, and I mean, it is very, very hard to believe that she's no longer with us, but out of nowhere, she sings this god awful song, and not very well, mind you, which is which matches with the Star Wars theme. Really, really, I. Words could not describe this moment. So, that was the Star Wars Holiday Special. It was very bad. In fact, it, in fact, many, in fact, so many of the parts here come. They do go like some of the comedy dance scenes. They do go on for very long. You know, they didn't need to be that long. But they decided to make him very long just because they're evil, I guess. And so, I mean, but I suppose it could kind of fall under the category of so bad it's good, but it's not that good. It's not the room, so it's going to have to be so bad it's bad. So, watch it as a morbid curiosity. Or if you're a, if you're a hardcore Star Wars fan, and you have to watch everything Star Wars related, no matter how bad it is, I'd say, go ahead and check it out, I'd say. I mean, it's only free, and, you know. Ah, oh, it was just... So, unfortunately, my final score is going to have to be a 1 out of 10. Boba Fett's... Boba Fett kind of provided that one point, but... Terrible, terrible. And apparently, the white originally was on drugs when he was doing it. So that's nice, isn't it? So, so anyway, aside from me torturing myself, have a merry Christmas, a happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, or happy holidays. Or if you want to be even less particularly correct, happy shut the fuck up. So, have a merry whatever. Good night.